guys and friends, welcome to episode 13 of the Seedling Stitch Knitting Podcast. I'm your host, Athena, and I'm a knitter based in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm also a PhD student in engineering. And today we're having a very special episode where I'm having my first human guest. Previously, I've had an episode with a knitted toy, Charlotte the Fox, as my guest. And this is my friend Yuran, and I'll let her introduce herself. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Yuran, and I'm so honored to be the human substitute of Charlotte. And apparently, I'm gonna talk more today. I am also from China, and I am a PhD student right now at the University of Alberta. I study speech language pathology. Yeah, that's me. We've been friends for many years. Yeah. We met in high school, we are in the same class. And when we were in high school, we had this uh, literature club kind of thing called the as you know humanity. <laughs> this, this, like, it, this just started as a joke. And our activity is like reciting Chinese poems. But yeah, <laughs> spontaneously writing literature assignments or homework. Yeah, it, it just, it, it's more of a joke than an actual literature club. She was the head of the association and we were bounded from um, yeah. high school. And apparently this, uh, this episode is not about high school <laughs> literature. <Or> literature. <laughs> and this will be about knitting and crocheting, embroidery, and a lot of amazing crafts that she does. I used to do a uh, cross stitch. Yeah. Cross stitching? Yeah, yeah. And, and I was sewing a little bit, embroidery. Hand, hand sewing. Hand machine. sewing. Only things. hand sewing. Yeah, yeah. yeah embroidery and then crocheting and a little bit knitting and today we'll be showing off all Yuran's work along with a few uh, whips that I have and also she was the friend that I am going to give this holy mittens uh, thank you there so you much are. this is perfect for Edmonton where really I'm from. <laughs> well I mean it's perfect for Edmonton fall or a summer <laughs> <laughs> thank you it's so cute yeah and I can see can I see the fox it's uh, a bit abstract I lost it this, this is the fox fox hand this thank is the you. fox eye this is another fox, <laughs> thank another you. fox eye. <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> yeah okay and I also brought you a gift which is also an overdue <laughs> birthday gift from yeah. last year yeah it's almost one year this um, is um, a rabbit knitting knitted rabbit because <laughs> I know you have a knitted rabbit Yay! and you're making friends <laughs> yeah good for you <laughs> yeah thank yeah. you and by the way, I am running a knit along called Animal Friend uh, KAL, where uh, it's gonna be run until the end of this year. And I talked more about it in another episode, and you can join it to knit more animal friends with me. And just today we're filming outside because she is allergic to cat, and I have two cats at home. So here we are. The sound quality might be a bit different, might be like interrupted by some cars. So, uh, but it's more, it's better lighting. <laughs> Sorry guys, thank you for understanding. Uh, I think it's nice for a change. Yeah. They, they, they've seen like 12 episodes of my home. <laughs> they are probably, like changes. They, they're, they're probably getting bored. <laughs> So, since we're doing a knitting podcast, we'll start by the knitting craft. And Yuran, would you like to show us some of your knitted sure, let projects? Sure, find it on my phone and you so can So she didn't it. bring all her stuff, so I'll just put some pictures uh, on my face. Yeah, so what is the first thing that you're gonna show us? Your recently finished object. So this is a little knitted hat, tiger hat. I made for my expected niece. Oh uh, yeah. Yes. When are they coming to the world? <laughs> September. Oh, it's almost. Oh, yes. she's almost due. Yeah. In in China? No, she's in Arizona. Oh, she's, it's uh, my partner's sister. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. And did you follow a pattern, or you <sighs> invented? <laughs> I definitely didn't invent anything, uh, but. I kind of followed a base of a hat. Yeah, so you followed a pattern, but you did a lot of modifications? I think so, I would say so. Let me show you my 
design of it. <laughs> it doesn't make yeah. any sense. Yeah, you had a very intuitive. Well, wow, that's a concept. Drawing, it's a conceptual so I, design. Yeah, so I think it makes sense. Yeah. Even designers Thank you. probably start with something like yeah. this. But it came out very different. <laughs> it, uh, what's the original uh, pattern like? It, it's not a tiger hat. The original it's just pattern. a plain, it's a plain little hat. And you added the color work? Yes. Uh, you do it with intarsia or... What is the thing you said? In, in, intarsia is like you have uh, two balls of this orange and one balls of the white. I oh, have ha it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. You did that. Two different balls. So there's yeah. no like long flows. Um, yeah, orange there yarn. is a long yarn behind it. So that's yeah. that's the stranded color work yeah, method. Uh, and then you embroidered the nose and the Yes, the nose is the embroidered. Eye, is the eye a button or No, a... it's embroidered too. What? Or sold. That's that's very cute. And what's the second finished object that you want to show us? I haven't finished them yet. Oh, the project. <laughs> I have two projects that yeah. is ongoing, uh, which is a bunny hat and a penguin hat. Yeah. Because my partner is crazy about penguins yeah. and bunnies are kind of my thing. So those are our animals. Yeah, and even her high school blog was called uh, rabbit <laughs> something yes yes yeah. so um this is for their upcoming birthday yeah. and then secretly having those two projects i'm gonna make a ha bunny hat for myself oh, oh, and we then... gotta show pictures yes <laughs> we can show i'm just gonna just don't not, let them yeah. watch this video i know <laughs> what's their birthday uh november it's in november okay so i'm starting early we have to hold it yeah Okay. So this is a bunny hat that I knitted. Yeah. I finished this one already. And uh, it, it is also from a base pattern you modified? There already? is a base pattern. Uh, you can put the link on it. Yeah. And, but I made some changes. So the base is a plain one, apparently, and uh, I designed. <laughs> <laughs> this is her design. <laughs> Again, I concept, designed the concept. <laughs> yeah, I designed the concepts. Yeah. And this is how the bunny came out. And you added the color work. Yeah. I remember you asked me how to do it in Yeah, because I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Your rabbit ear is a separately knitted piece. Yes, and exactly. And I used the, the method you told me to. Uh, uh, mattress sew it stitch. I, yes. I, I taught her mattress stitch and, and she, she got it. Yes. <laughs> And then this is how it looks when I'm wearing it's, it. It's very cute and it and works with you. For the penguin one, I I have only started a little bit, but yeah. I'm making some modification. Yeah. Is the penguin hat gonna be from the same base pattern? Yes. But you will modify, you will shape it with increase, decrease to add a ear show. flap. Yes, because the ear flight flaps are sideways, so you're actually knitting a side way thing oh i i see so you're basically knitting a, a band yes in exactly. this direction yes and then you pick up stitches around the crown yes. and knit a hat in like a normal hat yes you totally got <laughs> and, it and, and then you do the decreases it's like a different uh, uh construction Thank you for understanding my very messy <laughs> explanation. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so that brings the topic of how <laughs> Yura learned knitting because she's a very different knitter yeah. than, than me and we, we have different approaches to knitting techniques. Uh, so how did you learn to knit and when did you learn to knit? I learned knitting, I learned knitting later than crocheting. Yeah. But I learned it probably like before. What the age? <laughs> In high school. So I was like 15. Yes, 15. Yeah. And from your family? From my mom, yes. From your mom. Yeah. And your, your mom is like an experienced knitter. She's been knitting forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did she knit a lot of sweaters or things for you? Yeah, I can show you something she did. Yeah. This is. I can remember vividly when she was washing the yarns and she was knitting the sweater. It's an old photo. She, the yeah. texture comes from alternating knit yes. and pearl stitches and then there's an embroidered Yeah, there's embroidered a house. house. Yeah. And did, did she knit the Mao Ku, the oh, <laughs> uh, yes. ule, ule pants for you? 
I guess she did a lot. <laughs> um, so uh, we are from Harbin, which is the northeastern part of China, very cold during winter. And uh, it's it's a very common thing that uh, parents or like grandmas yeah. knit uh, woolly pants for yeah. us. I'll, I'll try to find a picture of the woolly pad that my grandma did for me. I think I even wear that one when I was in high school. Yeah, I think I did that too. Yeah, yeah so it's it's not like the most uh, pretty knitted piece. It's just <laughs> like for uh, for the warmth. For the warmth and the <laughs> sense of it's like a pr practical. It's just yes. a practical thing. Yeah. And and basically we wear an under pants. Uh, inside that yeah. woolly pants and then we wear another like jeans or like an uh, outer layer on top of that woolly pants so that like nobody would see the <laughs> woolly pants and they're usually done in red isn't it in red yes my they, i have they usually here. use the like bright red yes <laughs> for whatever reason yeah i think it's like for a good fortune for lucky maybe like yeah. good red is a considered a very very it's a good lucky color yeah it's a very good yeah <laughs> it's but it's not this red it's your your red is more pink pinkish but yeah the, they will use real red the, but they also knit they also like to knit those fancy cardigans with difficult cable and uh, knit and pearl textures I'll, I'll i'll see if i can find one sure. of from my grandma's knitted <laughs> cardigan. What? So did did you knit anything? I remember you were knitting scarves. Yeah. How many scarves did you have you knitted? Probably two. <laughs> so I I know that like in some European countries they have those like knitting class yeah. like classes for knitting and random craft that you can take. But like knitting is a com completely different thing in China. Like for Chinese high school students. Basically, it's a, uh, it's like it's like considered a pastime or like a play thing, and teachers would not be happy to see you knitting. Like you kind of, if you want to knit, you kind of have to do it secretly, like <laughs> below the table. I wouldn't do it in the classroom. Oh no! <laughs> I did it in I did it at home. Oh. Have you ever seen me doing that? Yeah, why did I have the impression that maybe you were at my place? <laughs> oh, maybe not you, but like I, I know some 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 people tend to do that. Yeah. Like it's a thing where you knit a scarf for your boyfriend, like to have deeper bonding. Yeah, <laughs> so. I I also see see it that way. I think it's a very sentiment sentimental or individualized yeah. kind of gift. It yeah. means that you're thinking of them when you're doing it. <laughs> Is that too yeah silly yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm more of a selfish knitter, <laughs> and and you know my my husband like he doesn't like woolly things; it mm -hmm. scratches his skin, and and like he's a very sporty person mm -hmm. now. So basically, he wears sports sporty t-shirts all yeah. day. There's nothing I could knit for him, and I just <laughs> don't bother. Oh, by the way, my husband is also from my high school, and we're in the same class, and yes. we 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 know each other. You said you. Uh, so you were knitting in high school, but yeah. you stopped knitting for many years and you recently picked that up. Yes. How did you decide to pick up knitting again? Yeah, it was because we were expecting a niece in our family. Yeah, but you could also like crochet your head for... Yeah, why? I don't know. I guess maybe <laughs> I was impacted by you because I knew you were knitting. Yeah. I'm like, why don't I try that too? So if I have any difficulties, I can <laughs> ask. <laughs> Actually, it's my knitting anniversary really? around these days. Maybe not today, but like wow. within these weeks, because I learned. I took my first knitting class in my local yarn store mm -hmm. about one year. Like, yeah, it's been one. Congratulations! Been. So, how did you learn those knitting techniques? It's like, like for me, I I, I read books and I have YouTube nowadays, nowadays yeah. and but. Back in high school, did you learn them those techniques from video? No, not at all. Uh, and just all from your mom, or like, do you have to figure something out? I guess mostly from my mom. Like she told me how to do the ping zhen and zheng zheng zhen and fan zhen. Uh, the knit and pearl. Yes, stage. yes. Basically, I learned knitting in English, and yes, you <laughs> learned 
English in Chinese. Yeah, I'm a Mandarin native. But like I also try to pull out resources from mm -hmm. like Chinese knitting patterns and Japanese knitting patterns. But I find the Chinese terminologies in knitting are quite interesting and we can talk about that. The knit stitch mm -hmm. in Chinese is called zheng zhen or ping zhen, ping zhen yes. or also xia zhen. So I've never heard about that. Uh, <laughs> that's the like that, that, that's the canon. Like in Chinese knitting books, uh -huh. they use xia zhen. These words xia zhen means down stitch. So basically, when you're knitting, you're you're pushing your needle down, or zheng zhen, which means the uh, right sided mm. stitch because you the, the the next stitch always appears on the right side and ping zhen is like flat stitch that's because like the next stitch are very flat and the pearl stitch in Chinese is fan zhen which means opposite or wrong side wrong side wrong, yeah. side wrong side stitch because it's always on the wrong side or uh shang zhen which is up stitch because when you're purling you like press your needle towards the upside and re regarding special techniques the, the cable in uh in chinese is ma hua and uh and ma hua is a chinese donut <laughs> uh yeah, Ma, I'll put a picture here. It's it's very delicious. It's it's sweet, but it, can it be could salty. also be it salt could and also pepper, be yeah. salty. But but the shaping of this donut is very interesting. Where you like you twist the the a long stick of the dough and then you twist them again, and so, so that they look like these, and they look exactly at the cable stitch. So. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we named the cable stitch with a food, which is ma hua. And it's very delicious. If you can find it in your <laughs> local Chinese supermarket, you should try it. Uh, you, 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 do you do cable stitch as? Uh, I did it, did yeah. You, uh, did you learn the cable from your mom as well? No, like one day I was just knitting the scarf. I'm like, I want to do the twisted thing that I saw on other sweaters. Yeah, it's very common. Because yeah, I know like, it exists, existed. So I was yeah. like, Mom, how do you do the twist? Yeah. And then my mom's like, You are smart. You figure it out. <laughs> and wow. I would just throw it away to figure it out by myself. Wow, wow. <laughs> so eventually the I don't a good practice for being a PhD. <laughs> It's like independent and experience learning, experience based learning. Yeah, yeah. So the method I figured out was that I used another stick, like a chopstick or a toothpick. Oh, you know, when I first <laughs> tried to do cable, I uh -huh. got a barbecue stick. <laughs> See, there you as go. my cable needle. Yeah. yeah, but like toothpick. So I put chopstick. it on the. Stick? Very Chinese, <laughs> very Mandarin, they use chopstick. Yeah. And then you just twist it and then you keep knitting, right? Yeah, yeah. that's that's basically what Is you do correct? with cable. Yeah, and then later on I uh, figure like out... You have a cable, like a, a cable needle where you can actually hold the stitch securely. Yes, yes. But then later on yeah. I noticed that you can also just use your needles, you can just pick it out from there yeah like yeah. If, if it's just like one stitch by one stitch cable yeah. I would just like let it yeah <laughs> let it dangle and then manually switch them yeah. you can you can search for like cable without cable needle that sort of tutorial video sounds good <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty much the same <laughs> as what you so did. I got it yes. yeah yeah and what other like fancy techniques have you learned I uh, do you have a favorite knitting technique Ooh. I don't think I have a favorite I think oh I like the um, recently from the hat I learned the knit and the purl so it's adding the stitch. Knit front and back. Okay. It's a yeah. like increased stitch work yeah, yeah, yeah. where you sort of add you purl that extra stitch yeah. into that knit stitch. Uh, that's not my preferred increase method because uh -huh. you will have a purl bump in yes, there. Yes, yes. And there's uh make one there there's a increase called make one. 
left or make one right、oh. where it's it's invisible. You just like have one more knitted stitch growing. Yeah, I think we have、yeah. very different approach to knitting. Like I am a very nerdy one where <laughs> where I I want to know like oh how many knitting techniques are there in the world. I will have chapter one. I will learn learn this. Chapter、yeah. two. I will learn cable. Chapter three. I will、oh. learn how to work. <laughs> and and like that's. Sort of my approach, but I I feel like for you, you you just sort of think of a thing that you want to knit, and then you just knit and see if you have see any challenges, and、yeah. and if you meet any, you will like try to just like ask people. Yeah, I want to do this. How how can I do this? Yeah, and I will tell you, you will do intarsia. Yeah, you will do <laughs> stranded color work, and then. That's why you, I you, kept WeChatting you. I kept messaging you. I'm like, how do I make it? <laughs> yeah. How do I, I make a hole in my piece? <laughs> yeah, I was very happy to be her like part-time knitting <laughs> tutor. And we can talk about knitting tools.、Okay. What like knitting needles tools do you like to normally use? Or、But、yarn? Yeah, like I have absolutely no idea about <laughs> what are available in the market. Yeah. So I kind of just go off whatever I have at、yeah. home. But since I moved to Canada recently, I had nothing physically, nothing. Yeah. So I rely a lot on Athena to give me recommendations.、Yeah. And、uh, for knitting tools, I guess I really miss the kind of very long needles that we had back in China. Yeah, I, I think my grandma have those on steel or yeah, bamboo. Yeah, yeah. Steel、you know? or bamboo? Do you guys ha- do we have it over here in Canada? Uh. Yeah, yeah, we have those free、really? yarn store, but not as yeah, not as I've never as, seen not as long.、Yeah. Uh, I I have one gift that I'm gonna <laughs> give you. These are the bamboo needles that I got from buying the Chinese yarn. I I buy a lot a lot from this、uh, love yarn, and they just gave these double pointed needles as gift. Thank and, you. And I'm I'm a I'm a fan of long circular needles. <laughs> I have. Uh, 100 centimeter circular needles, all sizes. It's like I just keep these double pointed needles as a spare pair if、yeah. I happen to have two projects in the same size. But I I don't really like to use. You、these. don't really like it. That's yeah, why you I give feel, it to I me. Yeah, I feel it's too long. Yeah. And and like if I have a knitted fabric here, it just it's the、uh. long lever and it. It weighs on my hand. It's the long lever. I love it. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> engineer. Yes. So I like it because you can. This is not long enough for me. The long, even longer one. I feel like、yeah. you can rest it on your arm and you yeah, do something like this. I've heard from some region in Shetland. They have a. They have those really long knitting needle, and、yeah. they have a thing called knitting belt, where they sort of <laughs> rest the. They're very long needles, and they could knit with that method very fast without straining on、yeah. your hand. But、uh, I haven't learned that, and I'm happy with my long circular needles. So sure. Here you have it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been talking this whole time about my project. Is there anything you want to share with our audience?、Uh, okay, just for the knitting, I have a few finished objects and work in progress. I'll just quickly show.、Uh, I still have my. This is where I've gone with my fortune sweater.、Uh, I've talked more about the technical stuff in my previous episode, and since then I have finished two sleeves. These are like.、Uh, Quarter, three quarter、yeah. sleeves,、uh, so it's easier to finish. And now I just need to finish the body, and I think I'll just talk more about it in my next episode. And I have some socks.、Uh, I showed the yarn that I had for this kiwi sock. It is a self patterning yarn. Uh, I got from my local yarn store. I finished one sock, and I use my own <laughs>、uh, toe up socks pattern. Free. And I just did one、uh, modification where I changed the heel.、Uh, in my pattern, I had a slip stitch heel, but here I used the honeycomb stitch, which is a type of cable stitch where you do this like wiggling shape to form this honeycomb pattern. I I selected this stitch pattern for the heel because I think it's sort of like the kiwi fruit peel. <laughs> 
so that's been fun. Yeah, that's so smart. <laughs> and I have another sock. And this pair of socks are my own design. Uh, originally, I designed this for the uh, Land Magazine's 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 2. Uh, but unfortunately they didn't pick my design so I'm gonna just self-publish this pattern I'm still working on writing the pattern yet these are just samples uh, since we're doing like a Chinese cultures related episode I'd like to show these uh, these uh, these are inspired by the Chinese blue and white porcelain Qinghua uh, Zi in Chinese it's from, very famous from the 14th century up to yeah. like perhaps even the 19th century. Uh, it's a type of porcelain that's very symbolic for Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, that paint was actually imported from Persia. Oh really? Uh, yeah, that I didn't know paint that. was initially imported from Persia mm -hmm. but got very popular uh, in, uh, within the Chinese like okay. pottery making and porcelain making industry and Chinese potters perfected this technique. The socks are done with color work, uh, stranded color work or feral knitting techniques but these motifs are a rep representation of uh, these Chinese blue and white porcelain and the bottom a motif is called Hui Zi Wen, which is like infinity going uh, line and it symbolizes like infinity fortune or something and this is in Chinese called the Chen Zhi Lian Hua which is like a uh, lotus on the vine and these are also very uh, popular and symbolizes also infinity fortune I think like <laughs> everything's yeah, about fortune in Chinese yeah, culture yeah 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 because like these wines are going and forever, going forever yeah. I think I think lotus in Chinese culture is more like being noble yeah being morality yeah, yeah. being like pure yeah that sort of thing and uh, this motif is called the Rui motif and Rui is a Chinese scepter like originally it's a stick for scratching your back and like when you feel itchiness but after that like just because it sort of symbolized you can get what you want mm -hmm. and you can get everything as you wish and then like people no longer use it to do like the back scratching but instead like make it with jade or something mm -hmm. to to have those good symbols and and that is also a very common motif that appears on the blue and white porcelain and then up on the top this is just a very common decoration that appears on the edge of the mm -hmm. blue and white porcelain and here I did the corrugated rib where I like knit with the blue and pearl with the white just so that you can have a good mm -hmm. stretchy fabric for the end of the sock and I'll probably do the test call in like two weeks when I finish writing the pattern but I would like to ask you and you about mm -hmm. the name so I have several options I could call these Chinese porcelain sock or Qinghua sock with the Chinese pinyin or the blue white porcelain sock mm -hmm. Or like I write the Chinese character Qinghua and then call it with English porcelain sock. Do you have? <laughs> I like the Qinghua idea because I the always like pinyin or the Chinese character character or pinyin with the pinyin with the like spelling of the Chinese. Yeah. It might like put people off because it's not uh, very descriptive yeah. for non-English speakers. Hmm. So yeah, can I, you combine? I, I could write uh, Qinghua, the Chinese character, and then I write porcelain sock. I also don't want the name to be too long. Yeah. Because it's not very easy to be remembered. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Please comment below and if, if you have any good suggestion. So that's the knitting section, and we can move on to crochet, as I know that's one of the crafts that you are most proud of. And yes. uh, let's show off some of your work. Sure. Um, this is definitely from childhood, I would say. Here. Uh, yeah. Here, this is a tablecloth. Yes. And you can like move around to show the details. <laughs> uh, when did you make this one? I probably made it when I was 
11, 12 years old. Like towards the end <laughs> of elementary and the start <laughs> of junior high. What? And what yard? <laughs> Do you still remember? This is probably just those kind of um, cotton sewing thread. It must be very thin then. Yes, because you use it for sewing actually. Oh, yeah. you use the thread for sewing. Yeah. But do you remember what crochet <laughs> hook size? Must be very small. It's yeah, I have it's no like idea. Really, really, yeah. really, really lazy and lightweight. <laughs> and oh, I can I can just keep showing it. It's, <laughs> Thank it's you. It's so stunning. And uh, did you follow a pattern? Yes, like, what, this one I believe I followed a pattern. What the, what's the pattern like? Uh, it's like the, just the diagram. Where did you get the pattern there when you were, were nine? There were crocheting books that my mom had. Ah. Yeah, so I just saw it and I'm like, I want to make this. And how, how did you learn how to read the pattern? I... Like, I, I know the, the Chinese uh, crochet book follows the same system as the Japanese ones where okay. they just do diagram as I believe like very little written instruction yes and very graphical and you have to be able to understand those things like for outsiders they look uh -huh. almost like a, a drawing <laughs> yeah. yeah I definitely learned some basics from my mom I remember it was maybe I was still in elementary and we can talk about crocheting terminology and I can do translation the starting would be a mahua Ah, so in English that's called a chain stage, okay. a, ch a chain, uh, but in Chinese we also call that by ma hua, which was the Chinese donut. Oh, and <laughs> another... Because they looks like, yeah. it also looks like the Chinese donut. And another name for it was xiao like your oh, ponytail. Oh yeah, breed, yeah. breed, another, yeah, yeah, I've also heard that yeah, as yeah. well. And the basic stitch where it's only like one V high. Uh -huh. In Chinese, it's called duan zhen, which is a literally short stitch, mm -hmm. and in English, it's called single crochet stitch. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the taller one, where you uh, yarn over, go inside, pick the yarn, mm -hmm. and yarn over, pull through two, or yarn through over, pull through two loops, which gives you a two unit of height uh -huh. <laughs> of. A stitch that's called in Chinese Changzhen, which is the long stitch literally, and in English that's called the double crochet stitch. Can and I tell you what it's called in my family? Yeah, <laughs> I remember you have a different. We don't have a name for the duanzhen because it's just the basic. The my single mom, crochet. Yeah, my mom yeah. probably would just say the normal one or the basic. Oh, okay. And for the long, the long stitch. Uh, the, 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 the double crochet stitch, yeah. yeah. We would call it Li Zhu. Oh, which translates to yeah. popular stitch. That's that very descriptive. That makes sense, yeah, right? That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that makes more sense than double crochet stitch. You know that double cross stitch in Britain is triple crochet. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, and single crochet in American English uh, is called double crochet in British like crochet patterns, so it's very confusing. Uh, are there any other projects you want to show us? Um, I crocheted another scarf. Oh, is it, is it done in circle or done? It's just one piece. Yeah, so basically it's like one. front and back. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's, it's crocheted front and front, front and back. Yeah, and oh. from how the picture is, you know, how this is, this project was. Yeah, I made it for my ex. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but then they decided it was too girly because yeah, crocheting yeah, is kind of yeah, it's lacy. And it's lacy, yeah. So I ended up wearing it a lot. It, it, it's also like used the thin, very thin. Thread. This is not thin. This is probably some woolen uh, oh. yarn. And oh, we have a name in Chinese for this kind of pattern. Yeah. Do you want to guess what it is? Uh, it Songju or Kongjue No. You are. <laughs> no. Oh, so. Like you're 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 getting that. No, it's got bo luo hua, like pineapple. Oh, yeah, oh. that makes sense, right? Pineapple. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. I've, I've never heard of that. Yeah. Like I've seen in some, in some stitch where like you put five, uh, double crochet stitch in in one stitch to like make, this this shape. Uh -huh. I've heard people call that, uh, shan yeah. shan like in a fan or or 
贝壳纹、yeah. ，like a scallop shell. Are there any other projects? These are I won't even call them projects. They are like some random lacy coasters. They are pretty. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So、um, the second one, oh, I'll, I'll take these. Oh, that that's very <laughs> small. It's like four like tequila <laughs> cups. Yeah, I guess I just have some leftover thread from that big、uh, table table cloth. cloth. Yeah. So they were also done when you were like, yeah,、11. same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your reaction. Yeah, because it's very thin and. <laughs> But you are also younger, so you have smaller hands. So maybe yes, that was、yeah. easier because like, and my eyes were sharper. Pro- oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without all the years of、yeah. wearing. Like I feel like the smallest crochet hook I have is two millimeter, and I, I like crochet with this yarn,、uh, and I feel that's already <laughs> too thin for me. <laughs> and like that's like how you started to learn crochet by like doing these. I think that's almost when I started. I probably you started by doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I probably have done some more random things before this, like crocheting a small handbag or something. Like purse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But those are more not designed, so it, it's just a big piece, and you sew them up or you yeah, crochet them together. Good, good for practice, right? But、yeah. like, but then like in the next month you went to those. <laughs> I don't really remember, but this was pretty early. Yes. Yeah. But I just peaked and plateaued. <laughs> I never learned more than this. So, I guess. So after that, you haven't crocheted. The scarf. So you haven't crocheted since like university. I would say so, but、yeah. if you ask me to pick it up, I can pick it up immediately. Well, that's that's, <laughs> that's cool. That is like learning how to bike. Yes. Yes. And do you do any de- designing when you? I don't、Try、think、to. so, cause this was too young for me to have that <laughs> conceptual thinking. So I、yes. didn't do any designing. Yeah, that、myself. requires some like geographical. I guess, yeah. Geome geometrical, I mean,、yeah. <laughs> not geographical. <laughs> I did, yeah, I did do some granny squares. Yeah. And I just did, stitched all of them together into a big bag. Oh yeah, yeah, that's very common. You、right? have any? I don't have、level. a picture. Yeah, cause、yeah. it's. Long gone, <laughs> yeah.、Aww. And I didn't like that one because it was too random. Because I did do some of the designing, <laughs> which was too random and messy, and I didn't、yeah. like it. Maybe just at here I can show off some of my yes, recent、please. crochet.、Uh, in my last episode, I said I was starting to crochet. Perhaps I think I for now I've been crocheting for a month. <laughs> and a、uh, last time I showed these granny squares, this and. The, The sunflower, and I think this is new. I didn't like the color choice, but like these are the these are four of the five colors that I have for this yarn, which were from some leftovers of my knitted animals. This yarn is easier to use than some other like woolly yarns <laughs> for beginners. It's easier on the hands. Oh, this is the right side. So I just like find some random crochet patterns from social media and and try to make them. And I'm going to give these four to my PhD supervisors as my graduation gift in like three months. And exciting! <laughs> yeah, and I've showed these. I'm just making a lot of these squares. Uh, for a bag, I have made six of them. I'm going to make eight in total, and then I'll stitch them together to make a, a bag, as <laughs> as you said. But like this will be consistently the same crochet square. Yes, please. <laughs> so that it won't be too random. And I think that the color looks pretty nice. These are all my grandma's yarn, and、uh, it kind of looks vintage. And And so I know Granny Square is one like genre of crochet, and another genre is amigurumi, which is like、uh, toys of like a closed fabric with stuffings inside. And I I made this. It's a corn. It's not a carrot. But it's、I、a carrot. <laughs> it's not a carrot. <laughs> it's I don't have the proper yellow yarn. So I followed a pattern from the book、uh, Crochet Cafe. I'll put a link below. 
and there there are a lot of food amigurumi in that pattern and I wanted to do this because I wanted to practice crocheting from a textural mm -hmm. instruction sort of pattern because like for these granny squares I just follow uh, the diagram mm. and I'm comfortable with that but then I also want to be able to read patterns and maybe potentially write patterns one day <laughs> or at least like I want to know how amigurumi works and mm -hmm. basically you are just doing a lot of uh, single crochet stitches and do some shaping with increase and decrease and then you stuff everything in it's it's very similar to what I've done for the knitted toys uh, but the texture is a bit different. It's it's more it's more stiff. And now I'm just using it as my pin pillow, where I just put the my tapestry needle <laughs> on it because because it it doesn't stand on its own, and I, I I don't know where else I can put it. And I also made a little bow of crochet. It's just like a crocheted round bottom, and then I crocheted through the back loop for when I turn them and then I do some long stitch, short stitch <laughs> then I do some uh, single stitch and double crochet stitch and then the top is made with reverse single crochet stitch where you like do single crochet but you do from the left to the right and so that it has these like pico kind of effect and I use this as uh, a bow to put my markers just by the side of my knitting corner. I just learned something new. That <laughs> side way, I've never done it. Uh, yeah, like I, like whenever I do a new project, mm -hmm. I try to like incorporate at least one new thing. That's so smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so that like I can, I will, I'll be comfortable doing some uh, old <laughs> technique yeah. I already knew, but I can also learn a little bit new stuff without being overwhelmed. So you're learning things systematically. I sort of chose my project intentionally mm -hmm. to to make sure that I learn something new. Like I, I, I don't like just knit something that at a glance I know yeah I, I know everything about it. I'm not as motivated to do it. Sounds good. That's <laughs> like how nerdy I am. Yeah you are nerdy. So that's all the crochet stuff. So let's move on to the uh, cross stitch and embroidery section. Maybe let's start with cross stitch. Uh, maybe let's just like show off your work as well as talking about how you started this cross sure. stitch thing. So I'll show you. This is my first big project. How, how big in actual size? Like 40, 50 centimeter. Yes, probably. That's pretty big. And you did this in high school? This was in junior high. Junior? Like middle school. Junior high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a gift. <laughs> for this is not a gift. Oh, this, this is, is for not myself. Yeah, oh, this it's still hanging in my home. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah, but you asked me about where I started. I guess that was in elementary school. And there was a period when. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was very popular and every girl was like holding this very small uh, keychain kind of thing with web uh, yeah and they, they saw, saw it as a kit and it's yeah. uh, kind of cheap it's not expensive no it's not a, at all like even middle school students could buy with their pocket money <laughs> yeah that's where i started and then i found that there were actually bigger projects than that yeah and it's easy to start it it uh, for people who haven't done any cross stitching uh, basically all the pattern was given to you yeah. and it's like a pixelized embroidery and the only stitch that you do is like in a cross shape and it's just go in go out go in go out and, and then go in go out from there yeah so, so it's pretty soothing it's like even I, like yeah. elementary student could do it <laughs> supposedly yeah yeah it's pretty simple that's why it's soothing and it's taking up time and you can the outcome I, is I pretty good I, I don't find it soothing why not so me too I also tried cross stitch in mm -hmm. elementary school I, I think I saw some in the like Da Feng Chu which is a children targeted mm -hmm. show in China back in our yeah. time and they sort of like interviewed a workshop of cross stitching and like elementary me just got obsessed <laughs> uh, by nighttime cross stitch was 
still not very popular in mm -hmm. whole China and only like when I was visiting Beijing and I saw a, a cross stitch workshop and I asked I begged my mom to buy me <laughs> one and in that workshop they only sell those like big <laughs> crochet stitch kit so I like bought one which is a drawing of like two little kids in the nature mm. setup. It's a cute design but it's too big for an elementary <laughs> kid and it's it's sort of it, I just find I, everything was too small. I think like knitting needle is the size that I can I handle. see yeah you like <laughs> larger scales. <laughs> yeah yeah the yeah. like the the need the embroidery needle is like too small for I me. See, I see I see yeah like even for the lace oh and my shedding, eyesight yeah. was bad. Right, maybe my, that's why. My eyesight was banned since elementary school and the, cro uh, the cross stitch is too small. Yeah. yeah. But to be honest, I found myself not really looking at it. It's more like you're... When it's very... Co I remember it's very complicated. Like gradient, you have to change color every yeah. like, three little stitches. And you have to see. <laughs> but because it's a lot of like motor muscle memory I guess eventually you kind of just feel where like how big each square would be oh, and you don't so really you, have to you didn't to... really count how many it's like just a rough position no because it's like printed on it for you like the pattern uh, no, it's not either my pattern. No? no it's just like oh, a white cloth and then like a pixel art uh, pattern yeah. book but even for the numbers, you can just like count in your head, but you just feel where it is. Uh, you don't really have to count one, two, three yeah, when you're looking. But maybe like maybe now with all my like fire owl knitting technique, I could handle it. Yeah. But like, why don't I just do fire owl knitting? That's <laughs> true. But you should try again. It's very pixel art y so mm. you can use all your designing tools to do that too. In, uh, I'll just do fair <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> anyway, I failed. I failed with my. I didn't. I didn't finish even a corner of that <laughs> elementary uh, thing, and then I never cross stitched again. Yeah, it's okay. You got successes elsewhere. So good for you. <laughs> In knitting. Yeah. Oh. So. Yeah, I've I've seen someone done the blue rose version. Oh really? This one. Yeah, yeah, I guess those are some generic or pretty yeah, popular this, patterns. These are, are there like little droplets on these roses? Yeah, like the water. Yeah, it's it's really lively with <laughs> the with the gradient of the droplet and yeah. the piano. But I give credit to the designer, not to me. I just follow the pattern. So that's all the cross stitch. And I think so. Yeah. And we'll talk about embroidery. Yeah. So. Uh, if you have seen the uh, embroidery at the beginning, that's done by Yuran's mom, who is a master in Chinese embroidery. Uh, maybe let's start with some of your <laughs> embroidery and then to set up the base. <laughs> set up the scene, like yep. to set the expectations. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so that we can like blow your mind by oh. her mom's embroidery. So yeah, I can show this one. Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is uh, Yura's gift to me, uh, but this kit is bought by me um, many years ago, like five or six years ago. Before I picked up knitting, I wanted, I just wanted to try out a lot of crafts to see if there's anything I like. So I bought. Uh, like two or three embroidery kit mm -hmm. and I tried one I'll, I'll put the picture of the result here which is a, like a dandelion and a smaller one than this and I didn't like for the reason I said before I don't like <laughs> embroidery needle <laughs> I just gave you ran this kit mm -hmm. and and then she did all these and then, <laughs> then she gave these back to me <laughs> as a birthday gift and this has been hanging on uh, the wall of my home oh, for like two or you. three years it's just like above my laptop where I can see it every day I'm glad to hear that yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but you you know how to do these even many years ago? Yeah, uh, I never really learned embroidering. Mm. Embroidery? Yeah. Embroidery. It's more like I consider it stitching. So I'm just sewing things. Yeah. And I need to use my stitches to fill up this space. Yeah. That's how I look at it. So I saw this, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try doing it. <laughs> Actually, I've never done a real embroidery before this. But I'm like, I'm gonna stitch on it, and uh, but it there are so okay. many different 
stitch. I, I don't know what's the name for this. <laughs> I don't like the idea. It's the same. You are putting the needle in and out. But you have to <laughs> arrange them in certain way to have like yeah. this little like popcorn. I don't know what what you call it or yeah, or I don't know the, the name this too. line. Yeah. And but yeah, I guess for leaves, you just kind of think about which direction you want the leaf to go. Yeah. Did, and did yeah. you like? learn these stitches like follow any tutorials for these or there just... like the kit kind of came with a tutorial right right, right. Like yeah like for those popcorns video. you will know how to make that little knot yeah but i didn't have anything other than that oh the others yeah. you just like intuitively i think so yeah uh, yeah any other works you want to show yeah let me show you the informal works uh, so these are little mm -hmm. hand how is this informal <laughs> i don't know i just found them <laughs> not to be a thing <laughs> uh what do you mean by informal like not it's like i'm just doing it for fun i'm not trying to make it look good i just use it to spend time it looks really good <laughs> thank you <laughs> and when did you make those flowers uh that was in undergrad yeah oh wow yeah so i didn't mention it because i didn't even consider that a work <laughs> uh, what kind of thread did you use are it's they, silk, are those thread. silk? Yeah, yeah yeah these are like shiny yeah with those pearlized yeah and I, I guess that's what you will have if you are using the silk yeah at the thread let's gradually move on to your mom's <laughs> work so you probably noticed that i'm a little bit overdressed for today and i did that for a reason so this is i'm wearing a dress it's a traditional type of chinese dress called qi pao and this qi pao i bought it on online but the pattern, symbol. yeah, all but the patterns on it was actually embroidered by my mom. You have a show then. So <laughs> I'm gonna show that to you. Ta da! <laughs> so if you can see all those little birds and the flower on my chest, this was done by my mom. And I'm gonna show you something else. Now, if you can see those flowers on my dress, these are also embroidered by my mom. So the dress was actually a gift from my mom for my master's graduation. <laughs> Here I'm gonna show you a picture of me wearing that and that was my graduation. Okay. <laughs> so you yeah. learned embroidery from your mom? I would say so, yeah. When did that? She didn't really explicitly taught, teach me to be like, oh, this is embroidery and you need to do this. Yeah. It's more like... I'm just watching her doing those things. Yeah. And uh, I guess we were even starting almost around the same time. Like oh. I was doing the handkerchiefs and she was like, oh, I want to try it too. So she would also pick one up and try that herself. But it never really become a formal hobby or uh, like her specialty at that time. Mm -hmm. But then later on, after she retired, she yeah. was looking for hobbies or like what to fill up her retirement life. Yeah. And she tried many different things like square dancing and like... Very common for Chinese moms. Learning English, <laughs> which was also not her thing. Oh. And then, Learning English is not a hobby. <laughs> it's not a hobby, seriously. But then she was like, oh, I used to do this handkerchief thing. I want to try that again oh. so she found a teacher in our hometown and she was the teacher was also doing su xiu yeah okay. yeah which is like the embroidery arranger from suzhou in china mm -hmm. and she kind of learned from that teacher and she mm -hmm. also got those materials and tools from her and they started learning and she became pretty yeah professional I, like are those motifs or designs given by people yeah or? it's usually designed by others i kept encouraging my mom to design her own thing but yeah. she's such a modest person she's <laughs> like oh like i'm not an artist i don't think i can do it although i think she could but anyways usually the designs are from others and uh, it's sometimes like famous chinese traditional paintings yeah yeah, 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 yeah. like this one <laughs> uh, uh, Tu one which is uh, which comes from a traditional uh it, like, it's like a modification uh, adaptation of yeah. the that traditional chinese uh painting I, I'll, I'll link the video wikipedia of the original painting as well or like put in a picture here yeah. and there's an and there's another <laughs> uh embroidery adapted from traditional chinese painting it's like 
They call it 侍女图 but they probably don't、uh, know where it's actually from. Like I also don't know where it's from. So, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That, that's fine. I just know the two parts. And she also had some like smaller, smaller projects. <laughs> uh, like this one, she especially wanna mention because this the one, bird one. Yeah, like the, the bird base. Yeah, like those little bottles. Ah, this this one. This is the Chinese、yes. blue and white porcelain, the same as my sock. Although that that is more <laughs> com- much much more complicated、oh, and real realistic. Thank you. I'll let her know your comments. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she wanted to mention these two because those those use the different techniques. Hmm.、Uh, oh, can you talk about、yeah. what different techniques they are? So if you zoom in a little bit, you're gonna see that the texture of this one is very different. Uh, it's more bumpy. Yeah, exactly. So those are those little popcorns you were、What? seeing over there. So this this genre of embroidery is called Suzhou, which is from the Suzhou area of China.、Yes. Is there any difference from this embroidery than? Uh, like Western, I I don't know. I don't think embroidery is like Western or anything. It's just like regular, normal. Yeah, I don't want to give any wrong information, but from my understanding, I don't found I don't find the specific stitches very different. But、yeah. it's more of like how much refined effort you need to put into it because apparently you're using different cloth and different well,、uh, what silk kind of cloth and silk. It's silk cloth and it's. So cloth and、yeah. silk thread. Silk thread, yeah. So it must be very thin. I it、assume. is very thin, yeah.、Mm, like one fourth of your <laughs> your tablecloth. Yeah.、Thread. So the thread would be coming in yarns, but you still need to split one yarn into like the single thread. So、mm. you can see like it come out to be very refined. And this one also done. No, this is. Yet another. This is another the technique. The porcelain is yet another technique. Yeah. So this one is called la sushiu. Yeah, like stretching the thread or pulling the thread. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually all going horizontal, very、uh, horizontal, very long way. So like one stitch is longer than、yeah. one regular stitch, and oh, it's sort of like a pencil. Painting when、yeah. you like want to shade an area, you shade them with long lines. Yeah, and then she had to layer the different colors onto it, but in the same direction. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is La Sushiu, and another one, this one. So this one contains something they call Luan Zhen Xiu. Uh, so messy or chaotic, chaotic. stitches. Yeah.、Wow. <laughs> so instead of letting. Instead of having a pattern that is going one direction,、oh. they would do it in a more chaotic way. So you almost have this kind of filtered effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it looks like in a dream. Yeah. Or oh, or like Chinese、uh, ink, Chinese ink painting、yeah. when like things are kind of blended and、yeah. you don't have the crisp edges. Yeah.、Uh, like, but in like, but when you are embroidering it. Like, do you design the directions, or you like it's really just random? I think it takes a lot of intuition. Like, you need to be,、um, you need to have the awareness of how your whole thing is going at the current state stage. Yeah. And then, do you need to add more randomness into it, or do you need to follow certain patterns so it still looks not extremely messy? So it's. A little bit impro improvised. I think so. But you have to be on a high level to be able to improvise on that. Yeah, it's <laughs> like even as simple as this one. So I'm doing the leaves over here.、Uh, that's your chaotic stitch. This is not chaotic. This is the basic. So you're following one direction, but、oh, then each leaf is a. Oh, it's a set of. So each leaf you follow one direction, but like for your mom's chaot chaotic stitch. Yeah. Even in one area of、Should、one color,、them. you will have、them. more randomness、that's, in it. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, I found it very hard for myself because it's、uh, it's very likely that you will follow a pattern and people will be able to see it when they zoom out to see the bigger picture. Yeah, but yeah. then you have to control that. So just out of curiosity, how long does it take for one of these works? My mom said for the smaller project, for her a smaller, smaller would be. <laughs> 
Yeah, That's... like a little painting you can hang on your wall. <laughs> that is smaller project. For that, she will at least take like two uh, two weeks or even like slightly longer. And got full time embroidery. Yeah, she almost because she's very very obsessed with it. So she could be <laughs> embroidering like the whole yeah, day. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, but not on embroidery. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys are similar in some ways. Um, yeah, and she will be starting when the sun rises, and she has to use the natural light. Um, Otherwise, it will be too focused, and it doesn't look good. You cannot see the、oh. direction of the threads anymore. Wow. Yeah. So she will follow the sun, but、oh, she will、wow. be embroidering the whole day. Yeah. With that, that sounds will, very traditional. Yeah, <laughs> I know. With that, she will take about like two weeks. But with the larger ones, like those little paint, those、uh, big painting. Yeah, like、rows, the scroll. It could take half a year. Yeah, yeah, I can <laughs> I can see that. That's pretty、uh, devoted. Yeah. And I'm also curious, like, what tool. So,、uh, do, do does she use special needles and and like I know she's like embroidery on larger scales.、Mm-hmm. So I know like some the holder like these won't do. Yeah. And、uh, how does he hold the work to have them in tension? Yeah. So to answer your first question, the needles、uh, they're pretty small, and like this one. Five four centimeter. But I always wonder with such a small needle, how do you pinch it? I feel like it will just slide. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> But you But once you practice a lot, you kind of get that feeling. That's very Chinese thing to say. You、yeah. just need to do it, and yeah, then yeah. you have the feeling of doing it. But yeah, just from practice, she kind of got used to it. Right. And then. Not as imagined that we would like stitch in and then stitch out.、Mm-hmm. Like when you're holding this holder, you'll be like stitch、yeah. out and stitch in like this. Yeah. They will put like one hand above and one hand beneath. Oh, so it's a two hand work. It's yeah. So you knit, stitch、like、in、knitting. and coordination. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of coordination. <laughs> She'll put it in and like get it with、you、the other hand, hand and, and then, then put it up. Yeah. But then the thing is that you cannot really see how it looks like in the back. So you use a lot of intuition and、But、feeling. Why do you need to feel? Oh, you you need to be able to know where you put the needle back. Yeah, exactly. It's not like you want the back to be pretty. Uh, there you also need to. Oh, there is another genre of、um, embroidery. It's like double-sided embroidery. Yeah. That the other side needs to be as pretty. To do that, my mom told me that you have to put a mirror on the other side、oh. or on the on, on the, the in yeah where you can see yeah so you can see the back. You need to make sure that is pretty too, but just for、it's、one side also like the sushio yeah、genre. it's within the sushio、like、a, a sub genre of the sushio yeah or it's a type of、um, project yeah. Anyway, but for like for coordination, it's like you need to know where your stitch is coming out because. That will become the start of your next stitch. Yes. Yeah, you don't want it to be random, right?、Mm, then、yeah. You have just to have the feeling. <laughs> you have to have the feeling. And then your second question about the shelf.、Okay. My mom also happened to be a very creative carpenter. <laughs> She makes a lot of wooden stuff by herself because we just have those soul souls and like wood pieces at home. So she made that shelf by herself. Wow. Because that would be. Individualized for our balcony size, which is where、yeah. she can catch all the, the sunlight. sunlight. Yeah, so she just made that little table <laughs> by、so、herself,、good. and then you also use the other, a more strong thread to sew your whole cloth onto that shelf. Yeah. So it can be pulled very tight, because、yeah. that's what you need when you're embroidering. After she finished. Uh, she will like tuck the corner in, or just cut them. Yeah, you would kind of need the professional people to frame it for、oh, you. To frame it, yeah. My mom learned that too. Very self-supplied. <laughs> yeah, she, she took a <laughs> Very lesson. Very independent. <laughs> took a lesson. <laughs> she took a lesson in、um, in China. We have senior universities or senior colleges. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She took a lesson of framing there. So there's a course. There is a course for framing.、Oh, yeah. Cool. My mom only took like yoga classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if she has to do it, she can do it by herself. But it's even easier to just send it out to 
like say a teacher, her teacher or to yeah. a supplier to do it for you. And this peony and this dog was actually the double-sided yeah, embroidery. Yeah, these are double-sided, that's why you would put it in a frame, so that you oh, a wooden so, frame, so you can see So you see sides. both sides? Yeah, you wouldn't be hanging it on wall, so it's a waste oh, of the other it's side, like right? like a ping pong screen. And just a fun fact, my mom designed this ping pong by herself. And she made it? She did no, that. that would be too much. But how, how, do, how do you design? Like you draw she the... Drew, yeah, she drew the patterns. She took some motifs from the traditional patterns. Yeah, yeah. And she drew the, drew the patterns by herself. Well, that's very cool. Okay, so that's, that's everything about embroidery. And as we are trying to go through all fiber arts, and the last section would be sewing. And neither of us has done any machine sewing but Yura had done some hand sewing, so yeah. I'll just let her talk about her hand sewing projects. Okay. So this is a gift yeah. for our me and my partner's sister's wedding. Yeah, and the sew part with the costume and the penguins are not... Yeah, so, so this the, is an original the, picture of the penguins. The penguin, yeah. yeah. And this is a Wonder Woman suit and a Batman yes, suit. Yes, because those are their favorite characters. And you just designed these by yourself and... My partner designed the pattern and oh. I did the sewing. And like by designing pattern, you mean like he gave you all the measurements? And, or, or did he just give you those very abstract drawings? We didn't, again, we didn't <laughs> use any measurement or real design. We just have the feeling. Yeah, he <laughs> also used the feelings. So he was the person who actually cut the pieces off from the uh, big cloth. Yeah. And because he would be looking at, like, say, cartoon pictures of those characters mm. or other uh, toys, stuffies of the characters. Yeah. And he would just use his feelings to <laughs> cut those pieces out. And I would be the one to sew them out. I learned hand sewing from elementary school. Home economic. Oh, oh home economic. Right? Yeah, yeah. home economic. From that, you know how you have the holes on your socks and the and teachers... And you have to mend them. Yeah, the teachers taught us how to fix them. And that's where I learned how to, I don't know, like pull the thread through the needle and then you can stitch on things. Yeah, the basics. Yeah, and then we didn't really learn more than that. But for me, like embroidery or cross stitching, they are the same thing you're just putting. Again, you're putting stitches <laughs> onto the cross. Yeah. So once you learn how to pull the thread through the needle, yeah. you do the stitches. Yeah, and you yeah. said it's a life skill. <laughs> I think it's a life skill if your button falls or holes on yeah. the <laughs> socks or you want to like adapt your clothes or dress or something like that. You mm, and <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't have I to have be... never done that. Yeah. But, but like I I wanted to make an inner lining of my knitted bags and my crocheted bags yeah. because like they them alone will not be able to hold just like for the finished project I yeah. may want to try hand sewing yeah. yeah so that's how I see hand sewing I hope the hand sewing lovers don't get offended by this like I for me it's a skill it's a life skill that you just use it when you need it and, uh, we've gone through all the fiber arts so now we'll just do like a retrospective I have sure. some questions for you yeah. so which craft is your favorite among all these that is such a good question yeah I never thought about it. I probably will say I don't really have a favorite. Is that an okay answer? Maybe instead of that, like how do you see these crafts and like just by different occasions you might prefer one than other? Yeah, exactly. It's more like I'm thinking about the final the project and the final outcome like if I want to make a hat or I want to make a shirt, it depends on what I want to make, yeah. right? And I will think about what is the best means for that. Yeah. And just like just based on the feeling of doing these, do you have <laughs> any like any one of them that you feel the feeling is better? Um I might have to say I enjoy crocheting a lot. The feeling of crocheting. The feeling of crocheting cuz it's a lot reliant, uh, relying on the hand movement, so you don't have to really count the lengths of anything or like look at things a lot. You just do it while you're doing other things. 
Uh, I'm not at that level <laughs> yet, but like I see one may get there. <laughs> so yeah, fun. so it's more it's more relaxed. Do, do you find crocheting is very hard on the hand? Like you have to thrust oh, the crochet yes. hook in, and sometimes it split the yarn. Yeah, and you have it, like it. Just for me, I feel crocheting is more exhausting than knitting. I think it also has to do with nerves. That like, if you're more nervous about it, you're focused a lot yeah, on, yeah. on your hand movement. Yeah. Then you're not relaxed, and it's more. Yeah, it's I, I try to, to yeah. let myself relax, but still, it takes it's practice. Tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm um, I'm okay with more practicing. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll we'll all get there. Yeah, I like I I sort of like do 30 minutes of crocheting, and then I have to switch to knitting. Like for knitting, it's like a uh, stress-free yeah so that's how you got there thing. like for knitting you're already in that zone but of relaxation i feel like in knitting i i was relaxed even at the even at the beginning like maybe not the first two weeks right but, yeah. but after that like the stress comes more from like when if i got a mistake how, how do mm-hmm. i fix it but if just the movement itself i'm kind of a hallucinator yeah yeah but i'm a tight crocheter probably i like that word that's what my mom called me to a tight crocheter and another thing i don't like crochet is that if you make mistake several rows or several rounds ago uh, you if you want to fix it you have to rip back you're right but yeah. for knitting you can drop down a few rows to fix that's right like, i found that part was stressful for me like if you fixing knitting yeah if you have to fix something i, I love that <laughs> see we're so I, different I, I, i'm i'm very good at fixing mistakes right now like now if i have a drop stitch or like if i miss a yarn over like for making the hole uh, I have no stress. I'll just oh, Good fix for it. you. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. One of my beginner knitting class students asked me, uh, "When can I be like you? When can I have <laughs> no more mistakes in my knitting?" And I say, "Like I, I, I still make a lot of mistakes. I just get better at fixing them." Yeah, <laughs> that's very philosophical. <laughs> Thank you. And a second question for you is, what do you consider your relationship with all these fiber arts? How do you consider them as part of your life? I like how deep your questions are. <laughs> yeah. um, I think the first thing is that I know that I have those skills. So, so I always consider them as skills instead of hobbies. Mm. I have those in my toolkit so when I need them or when I'm in the mood of doing something like mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. I won't be hesitant or being afraid of doing things like that mm-hmm. so if I need to uh, change my dress a little bit I know that I can do it I don't mm-hmm. have to pay money to do it um, so that's a life skill thing for me and yeah. also like once you're getting pretty good at it or you're used to doing it mm-hmm. It's, it becomes more relaxing or soothing because... Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, pastime, right? it's a relaxing thing You know the do. outcome's gonna be good, you know it's gonna come up pretty and yeah. you're just slowly the, getting there. The nerve calming thing to, yeah, it is. to do, especially for us PhDs, yeah. <laughs> it's much needed. Yeah. And spe- specifically for me, I guess it's also a way of me bonding with my family mm-hmm. or the older generation. When they heard that you're a knitter or you do um, <laughs> fabric arts, they so will funny. be very impressed and they will be like, oh, no. they want to give you a lot of advice. <laughs> they want to give you a lot of advice and that's always good for communicating with them. It's like very specific. You have something to yeah, do and it's together. It's always from like the female mostly from the female side uh, yeah, yeah i don't appreciate that culture too much it's like when i was learning those things i guess in the back of my mom's ha- head she probably thought oh this is a skill for a good wife uh, i don't know how to translate it but there's a word in chinese uh, yeah. called xianhui the quality of being a skillful wife that can take care of family home yeah thing. so yeah, i guess yeah. there was that kind of mindset I definitely grew it's all a, of it. It's a women's thing to yeah. to do, uh, and uh, yeah, and when I started learning to knit, and like my grandma, and my mom, aunties, they like to ask, <laughs> like, when well, are you gonna make your husband uh, something?" Yeah, I mean, I did do that, but <laughs> I haven't done it. But I don't mind making 
my husband something, but like I'm, I'm still more of a selfish knitter thing. And although I'm also very against that term <laughs> of selfish knitter, because like it's our time yeah. and we can decide to make whatever thing that suits us. And if, if, if we decide to knit something for our friends, for our family, that's uh, that's good, but I don't owe anyone any knitwear just because I knit very well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would agree with that. Like, although I'm knitting or making most of my projects for Yeah, we're just people. against the stereotype. Before I let you go, uh, how do you feel feeling and ceiling stitch episode? Um, I have been really nervous about it. As you can see, this is my first time doing any podcasting. You can probably see the excitement and the nerves and the self-consciousness throughout I'll the, the screen. Bad part out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I really enjoyed it because, like, yeah, I really enjoy talking about knitting and our lives, and I always love to talk with you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I feel less self-conscious. That's good to me. know. Yeah, <laughs> because I'll be focused on talking with you, and that makes my talking easier. And just since we have this public platform, do you have anything you want to advertise for your non-knitting work? <laughs> Yeah, as we are both PhD students, I guess I will promote my academic work. Yeah. So this is the website, which is designed by my partner. And uh, th this is where I put my clinical stuff and my academic work and also some life stuff, uh, some discussions with my friends over there. So please feel free to have a look. And uh, I also have a Billy Billy channel, which is Chinese YouTube. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not putting a lot of effort onto it, but there is a very important thing I want to mention. It's the tenth year graduation since high school. Since high school, yeah, we kind of did a singing video together <laughs> with with me, my husband, her, and a lot of other high school students around yeah. the world. So now. you can find some familiar faces over there. And thank you for joining this episode. Uh, and I'll just say my Euro stuff. If you enjoy this episode, please consider support me on Ko-fi, ko-fi.com slash seedling stitch. You can make a donation or become a monthly member so that uh, I can have more time to film more regularly and make more contents. Uh, I'm on Ravelry as Athena Liu and on Instagram as SD underline Athena and I can chat about knitting or any crafting related topics there. And as a tradition of all my podcasts, I usually play a piece of piano at the last of each episode. And today we're filming outside, so I'll be playing some ukulele. Uh, I'm not very good at it. I just started learning this since uh, quarantine. So, uh, but like, I'll just play a few chords and we'll sing a very traditional Chinese song, the Mo Li Hua or Chinese Jasmine, probably. Yeah, here we go. So I was knitting a scarf oh, for... We were knitting for a boyfriend? Yeah, for my ex. How many scarves have you knitted for how many exes? <laughs> for... <laughs> oh no. <laughs>